All right, I want to go over uh, some of these comments here. First of all, from BRL, um, answer, the kingdom will be given. I guess the question would be, what happens when Jesus stops reigning? <clears throat> well, that's kind of a, that's a dumb question because Jesus does not stop reigning. But BRL says, answer, the kingdom will be given to God, even the Father, and Jesus shall be subject to his Father. I really hope this clears things up, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Read carefully. Alright, so we're going to read carefully, and she's going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians uh, here. Uh, what is it? 15? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the death, of the dead. Okay, so Paul's talking about the resurrection here. Alright, so let's start here. Let's start, let's go here in verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Christ, or I'm sorry, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The, la the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that it is that he is accepted which did put all things under him and when all things shall be subdued unto him then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all all right else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all why are they then baptized for the dead okay so uh, if you want to understand more about that, read the whole chapter, read the context of everything. But in regards to BRL's comment here, you're going to notice here that she is attributing uh, Jesus as Christ, and Jesus is the Christ, but Jesus is God Almighty. Right? And so the verses here, you notice here in all those verses let's go from what we read from 28 let's she I think quoted from 21 to 28 all right and you notice from 21 to 28 it doesn't say Jesus it says Christ all right so this is important all right so go from 21 to 28 and you notice Christ being the Messiah, the Savior, which is Jesus. And the purpose of the Christ is, you know, described here. Uh, it's explained here that, um, where's this verse at? Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Talking about Christ. All right, and then right there, here in verse 20, Then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. The Son referring to Jesus. Keep in mind, God is Jesus. Jesus is God. All right, so 
we could go to just do great mystery without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh this is talking about Jesus Jesus is manifest in the flesh right? and the, the reason why I say Jesus is because the name of God is Jesus Jesus is God he's not separate from God he is God all right, so let me read the last verse here. Did I get everything that she quoted here, I hope? Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in Lord Jesus, I, let's see, and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his uh oh uh -oh, power let's see I don't like when you're adding stuff there oops all right so let me find a where's that at So what do we get here? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power <laughs> So you're you're trying to make a separation from Jesus and God the Father. Jesus is God the Father. All right, that's important to understand. There's no separation. All right, so and what are you what are you going to here? So, okay. Which he has which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which it is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all now that for an unbeliever it's impossible to understand for a believer we ought to understand that Jesus is God Almighty so when we're talking about Christ we're talking about the Savior the Messiah when we're talking about God the Father we're still talking about Jesus so Jesus is Christ he is God the Father he is, he is the Son of God he is the Son of Man he is the Savior of the world. He is God Almighty. Okay. So, and again, great is the mystery of godliness. No question about it. So think about this. I will go to Isaiah 43, verse 11. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. Who said that? Jesus said that. So when Jesus gave, oops. So when Jesus gave Moses the Ten Commandments, or I should say, when Moses got the Ten Commandments, it was Jesus who gave it to him. 
All right, when it was written with the finger of God, it was written with the finger of Jesus. All right. Now, let me read this last part. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Right. So, again, it's important to understand Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of Man. He is God the Father. He is all of those how many gods are there this is important to understand it really is for there is one God and one mediator between God and men and the man Christ Jesus the man Christ Jesus all right so Jesus is God Jesus is the mediator and Jesus is the Christ of course all right so let's go here let's do it this way there's only one God there should be no doubt no doubt about it all right no doubt about it so let's go back to Isaiah let's see if I can find that verse here Isaiah 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born this is talking about Jesus baby Jesus unto us a son is given still talking about Jesus and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the Prince of Peace Jesus is the everlasting father So let's go to John and Jesus says unto him have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me Philip he that has seen me has seen the father how sayest thou then show us the father Jesus is the Father. All right. And let's go. You know, why call me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Right? And Jesus saith unto him, Why call me good? There's none good but one, that is God. Well, he's not saying he was wrong, that he was called good, because Jesus is. God, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Why callst thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Well, Jesus is God Almighty. All right, there shouldn't be any doubt about it. So we can go back to Abraham to understand this a little better. Well, let me just tell the story real quick. So Abraham... Um, was told to offer his son as a sacrifice but then the angel stopped Abraham Abraham was gonna do it but the angel told him not to do it and that's because offering his son was not going to be good enough because his son was not good enough the only one that's good enough is if God offered his son which is perfect which was baby Jesus See, God was manifest in the flesh, right? And so his offering, his sacrifice, was the only one that was ever going to be good enough to cover the sins of the whole world. Right, so what am I looking for here? Oh, I forgot what I was looking for here. Excuse me. All right, there it is. Okay, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, 
believed on in the world received up into glory. This is God. All right, there's only one God. There's not two gods. There's not three gods. There's one God, and it's Jesus. There is no other name for God but Jesus. All right, we go, let's go to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Alright, so Jesus is God, the Word of God, the Son of God, God the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Christ, the Messiah, and, you, and then also we could do this here. First, or I'm sorry, Matthew 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth the son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Jesus is God Almighty. Now you still have... A doubt or question about that let's go to Revelation Jesus says I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty Jesus is Almighty God there's only one God it's Jesus all right and then we let's go to Revelation 22 verse 13 I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last there is none before him there's none after him he is God Almighty alright so he's God the Father God the Son he's the Holy Ghost He is God Almighty. All right, so look, let's go back to John, and um, let me see if I got that right. Let me see if I got that right. Let's see here. All right, so he's talking about right here. I will come to yes I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you now uh, what he's talking about is the Spirit of God alright I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And he's talking about the Spirit of God. And you go back to John 3, when Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. He's talking about being born of the Spirit of God. So when you are born of the Spirit of God, that Spirit that you are born of is Jesus he is the Spirit of God he is the Christ the Messiah the Son of God God the Father the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth the Comforter he is all those things it's Jesus there is no other God there's one God it's Jesus okay so the question is now uh, all this pertains to the question or the uh, there was a comment made uh, somebody said that well what happens when Jesus stops reigning well he hands over his kingdom to the father well Jesus is the father okay so he's not giving up his kingdom for anything right he's he reigns forever there's no doubt about it uh, you have to you cannot you cannot 
dismiss this verse here. You can't do it. The scripture cannot be broken. You either believe what the scripture says or you don't. And the scripture here says he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. This is talking about Jesus. Make no mistake about it. So Jesus is not handing over his kingdom to another person. Right? So in if we understand that and we understand what BRL is uh, quoting here in 1 Corinthians 15 and that he's talking about Christ shall hand over what is this here? Let me find he must reign till he must I have to go because I you got so many you're adding your own twist in there and you're and the problem is you're making a separation between the son and the father and there is no it's all Jesus okay so let's go back here let's go back and he shall be and then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God he shall and who's Who's he? It's Christ. All right. So right now we need a savior, and that savior is Christ. But once the end comes, and then everything is fulfilled, right? Therefore, we no longer need uh, somebody to save us uh, and deliver us from this world after we are delivered from this world okay once we are resurrected we no longer have a need to be resurrected all right so in the Christ the Savior is the one because of him we are resurrected because he was resurrected so shall we be resurrected and then once we are resurrected we no longer have a need to be resurrected. Okay? Now, so when it says, uh, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, he must reign till he put all his enemies under his feet. Alright, so... This is something that's going to happen, but it's not going to be something that needs to happen after it happens. All right, that's the best way for me. That's how I understand it. And for me, it's the easiest, simplest way to understand it. All right. So, uh, when, when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall... The Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Again, there is a need for uh, these things. There is um, an order of things, right? But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits after they that are Christ. Uh, afterward they that are Christ at his coming so there's an order of how things are going to be done now once these things are done there is no longer a necessity or a need for us to be resurrected for us to be transformed into our heavenly bodies our glorified bodies our incorruptible bodies once we get to that place so that's all that's talking about when it talks about um, when it talks about he shall when when the end comes then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God even the father when he shall when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power again this is the end the end is those of us that are saved, those of us that believe, those of us that have faith, those of us that are 
resurrected. We shall be lifted up. Our enemy will be gathered at our feet. Those, our enemy is those that do not believe. So they are gathered at our feet. And they are destroyed forever. Right? This is consistent all throughout the Bible. We read this in Genesis 3. For he must, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Right? So this doesn't mean that when he puts all enemies under his feet and the enemy is destroyed, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That doesn't mean he stops reigning. It cannot mean he stops reigning because Luke chapter 1 verse 33 cannot be wrong. You cannot have one scripture in the entire Bible that is wrong. All right. If you don't understand how to reconcile this with this, then you probably need to read more, study more, and just think about it more. These cannot contradict one another, and they don't contradict one another. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now you go back here, read each word carefully. Notice, it's not talking, it doesn't say Jesus. It says Christ and why do we need a Christ why do we need a Savior why do we need the Messiah that is so because we need to be delivered out of this wicked world once we are delivered out of this wicked world there is no longer a necessity for Christ there is no longer a necessity for us to have somebody deliver us out of this wicked world because the world that we will be in will not be wicked there will be no more sin no more death no more unbelief no more wickedness at all so there there's no longer a need for somebody to deliver us from the wickedness because we are already delivered all right and so it's nothing in here is suggesting Jesus stops reigning. It's not there. All right. The only way to make that argument is to imagine that there is a difference between Christ and God, and there's not. It's Jesus. Jesus is Christ. Jesus is God. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of Man. He is God the Father. He is God Almighty. All right, so I think I've rambled on enough about that, but um, let's continue this conversation if you have any doubts, because I want to be able to explain it in a very simple way, a very easy to understand way. All right, and this, this will help you having the conversation will help me it'll help you it help everybody involved so let's continue if you have any doubts at all challenge me let's continue this conversation right so I think that's enough I was going to share one more verse um, but this that's good enough okay so I appreciate appreciate that you know, I was going to touch on these other comments too here. Maybe I take one second on each. Um, Richie says, I had someone say to me, we can't be reigning right now because no one's been beheaded yet. That happens after the rapture. All right, so that's a great point here. Let's go to Revelation 20. Let's fit this scenario. In Revelation 20, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. This happens during the thousand years. People are getting beheaded. That's why I call it a zombie doctrine. Right? So, on one hand, they say it's a thousand years of peace, and then on the other hand, we're being beheaded. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. 
They're listening to Watch Man End Times Prophecy Channel. He teaches everything wrong from once saved, always saved, pre-trib, pre-trib rapture, nine sins that Christians can commit that will send them to hell. Uh, right there, if that's true, then that person or persons have no idea what the Bible says at all. And even when they read it, they don't understand it. All right. Uh, so that thanks for that, Richie. That's crazy stuff. Roderick says one thing. Karen and Preston mentions with what Jimmy mentions about selling books. These deceivers are witches, warlocks, writing their spells in their own books. Those spells are very powerful because some are derived from the scripture. Um, no. No. Those spells are nothing. They are vanity. All vanity. I wouldn't give any credence to the spells of witches and warlocks. None at all. Uh, the, Jimmy, the that clip about Stephen Fruitlick, was that his name? It's a ridiculous name, if that is, okay, but whatever. People could say that about my name, too. You said, be fruitful and multiply. That command was for Adam and Eve. Well, we are all children of Adam and Eve, so that applies to us. That hasn't stopped. It only stops upon the end of the world. And that, that applies to everybody that is born from Adam and Eve. And everybody is born from Adam and Eve. That has not ended. Right, and then truth sets you free. My Frisian Bible contains the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is not a part of the Bible. It's never been part of the Bible. It's not. It's not part of the Bible. So, the mistake you're making there is thinking that the Apocrypha is part of the Bible. It's not part of the Bible. You might have a book that has the Bible and the Apocrypha, but the Apocrypha is not part of the Bible. It might be part of your book, but it's not part of the Bible. Salvivic is a Latin word, basically Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. You don't trust the Catholics, don't trust Latin, trust God only. Alright, okay, so I think that's enough. I've rambled on for a long, what's this conversation here? Oh, Karen, those chemtrails you posted have distorted your views. Right, what's she talking about here? First of all, TV evangelists are FTM or MTF. Uh, what is that? Is that curse words? I'm not sure what that is. I don't know that I want to know what that is. That I'm afraid to even copy and paste that. If I copied that and searched it, God knows what might show up. That deception runs deep. Think about it. Donald, Donna Trump. Men wear suits and ties to hide the fact they have no real Adams, apple, and big hips. Adam, he does not lie. A man walks as a man, and the same for a woman. Well, uh, the only thing I will say is, if a if a somebody call if somebody says they're a woman, uh, unless you know for sure they're not a woman. You have to assume they're a woman. In no way do you want to assume a woman is a man. If there's any chance at all that a woman is a woman. That's highly offensive. It's like walking up to a woman with a big belly and saying, Congratulations, when's the baby due? If you're not sure she's pregnant, that's incredibly offensive. All right, same thing with all this stuff but you know I get it we live in a world that is absolutely gone bonkers and men trying to be women and women trying to be men and I blame the pub the public school system I really do I think you know are, look are they teaching the law of Moses in the public school system are they teaching the truth of Jesus Christ in the public school system if not there's a problem it's a big problem 
there's something wrong going on. All right. And they're feeding off the wickedness of man's hearts and, and they're brainwashing little children. And it's all pure wickedness. So, anyways. Transvestigations. What? I don't want to know what's going on in this conversation here. But, anyways, thanks, guys. I appreciate the input here. We are being ruled by, ruled by Gads, a transversal. I don't know. Well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know what's happening there. So, anyways, I appreciate it. And BRL, again, this will not change. Jesus is God Almighty. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Comforter. When we are born of God, we are born of Jesus because Jesus is God Almighty.